Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for March 8 through to March 12. Significant solar activities over the last 36 hours, as well as coronal mass ejections en route to the Earth and a powerful coronal hole formation in the southern hemisphere, represent a potential of a 7 magnitude earthquake during this watch. We now look at the latest coronal hole information with the Solar Trestle Activity Report and we see a significant area of note in the Southern Hemisphere, CH506, which has developed over the last 48 hours and it does stretch right through the Southern Hemisphere and I feel harbours the potential of a 7 magnitude earthquake during this watch. We now look at the latest solar wind telemetry from ACE and we see that levels of solar wind speeds are slightly fluctuating from 360 to 380 kilometres a second. This is expected to change over the next 24 to 48 hours on the arrival of the coronal mass ejections and the high speed solar wind stream coming from coronal hole formation CH506. We're now looking at the southern hemisphere with the use of solar monitors 193 angstrom and we do see two areas of note that will affect the solar wind speeds over the next four to five days. Coronal hole formation CH505 as its effects start to wane as it's rotated away from the earth facing position we're now starting to see solar wind speeds drop to around 350 kilometers a second but this will change once the effects of coronal hole formation CH506 begin to affect the earth and this should move solar wind speeds up towards 550 kilometers a second sometime early on March 8. We're now looking at the active regions on the solar corona with the main solar flare activity coming from active region 11429 where this region has produced a series of M-class and an X1.1 class flare yesterday. Now this region is growing and expanding quite rapidly so we may see another X flare over the next 24 to 36 hours coming from this region so we definitely need to monitor this. Now there's also a possibility that once this active region starts to turn the northwestern limb we may see another spurt of activity and another X flare so it's definitely worth monitoring and keeping track of. We're now looking at both coronal mass ejections with cactus and we can see clearly on this service two halo coronal mass ejections en route to the earth. Now there is 18 hours of separation from both solar disturbances so it's unlikely that the second CME from the X flare will catch up with the first. So we should see two significant impacts on the Earth's magnetic field sometime on March 7 and I feel should produce a strong geomagnetic storm either March 7 into March 8. Now the space agencies have updated their report saying that both CMEs are going to miss the Earth. I feel that this is completely misleading as both coronal mass ejections do have a strong halo component. We're now looking at the latest synaptic coronal hole plot where we're looking at this coronal hole formation and looking at where these energies are being directed from the high speed solar wind stream exiting this coronal hole and it does appear that this coronal hole does have a strong component towards the rear flank and I feel this will be the main area of concern and may produce the significant earthquake in and around these latitudes. We're now looking at the 193 angstrom with solar monitor and focusing on the southern hemisphere and this large coronal hole formation. Now I do feel that the area in behind is the main area of focus and I have isolated 28 to 36 degrees south latitude as a main area of concern for this watch. I'm now going to plot a map of region I feel would be most at risk for this significant earthquake based on solar symmetry of this coronal hole formation to the earth and my number one area of concern is for South America, more specifically the regions of Coquimbo in Chile, adjacent to the regions of San Juan, Argentina, stretching down towards Bio Bio in Chile. These would be the number one areas of concern for this watch. My second area of concern are for the regions north of New Zealand, more specifically the regions of the east coast of the North Island New Zealand, south of the Kermanic Islands and also adjacent to the region of Raoul Islands and that will be the Kermanic Islands region. This will be the second and final area of concern based on this coronal hole formation to the earth for this possible 7 magnitude earthquake during this watch. We're now looking at this coronal hole formation in the southern hemisphere again as I do see a possible 5.5 magnitude earthquake could be possible as this coronal hole formation is expanding in a southerly direction and there is an area of upliftment at around 44 degrees south latitude and also 55 degrees south latitude that may be indicative of separate earthquake potentials during this watch. The dates of March 8 and March 11 may be indicative of a 5.5 magnitude earthquake for the South Island of New Zealand based on what I'm seeing on the sun at this present time so it's definitely worth keeping a close track of as we may see a fairly strong earthquake or a decent shake for the New Zealand region on one of these dates. And there may also be a strong earthquake potential possibly 5.5 in magnitude for the South Sandwich Islands region for this watch. 
We're now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly. This is showing parts of the globe that may be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures, and the areas we're focusing on are shaded in darkish green. Now the main regions showing up for this week are in Australia, this is a very strong reading, Hawaii, Argentina and Chile, the Samoan region. We also have powerful readings showing up in the Madagascan Channel, just above Madagascar, and also the Reunion Islands. And in the Indian Ocean, we also have another reading showing up in the Nicobar Islands and Andaman Islands region. These are the main areas of focus in terms of radiation anomalies for this watch. And that's my volcano and earthquake watch for the 6th of March, 2012. For more information, please visit my website at solarwatcher.net where I'll be providing more content for subscribers and members. Annotations will be added during and at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.